Good bula, everybody. Well, at least one thing good, we don't have stay here on Fiji time, otherwise it will be real Fiji time here. <laughs> Everything works there in Fiji time. So we are glad and thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you, Pastor. And we are glad that uh, and know that, you know, brethren here pray for us and the work and the ministry in Fiji. Uh, that's why we continue to do what we are doing by His grace. And uh, we invite you to come if you have time. We see Josh is there in walking holiday and uh, so he will be doing some preaching for us while he's there so we, we thank god so uh, from glory gate baptist church and christian school uh, we bring greetings to you all and uh, a big vinaka baklevu that means thank you very very much for all your supports and prayer throughout the years and uh, as word continue to grow in the island of Fiji, we see men, women, boys and girls come to know Christ. And the good thing is, even they don't stay there, they go everywhere in the world, and but they're used by God. So the input that a church can put in the life of a person is very tremendous. And by that, they grow, they mature, and when they are out and about, they stand up for the truth. So we are so glad to be part of that ministry. So thank you. And uh, my wife couldn't be with me because she got bigger responsibility than I do, cooking for the students who are boarding there and uh, also teaching in the school. And so she, she'll be running up and down and I'm sure that this afternoon I was talking to her, since she was very tired and she said, I'm tired. I said, yeah, that's good. You're young. You can do it. So we just remind on them. So I just have a video to present to you this, more, this evening. So enjoy, and uh, if you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you.
thank you. That was a little video about what we do as far as ministry is concerned. And we reach out to the, the area that we are in outside the area, which is the interior of Fiji. And uh, we reach out to many people who think they were Christian because they were born in Christian family. So when we go and sit and talk with them, they didn't know that then they have to invite Jesus in their heart. So there's so many like that. Somebody has to go. Somebody has to tell them the truth. Is going to church doesn't make anybody Christian, but they need to know Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. So that's a lot of challenge and a lot of work to talk with them, to explain to them, and to know how we can. So we work through NEMA project where we go and put, like some people have a very dead floor in their house. They don't have concrete floor or nice. They sleep there. They cook there. They have little tiny thin shared house. So we try to improve their living instead of doing by little, by putting concrete floor or adding a small kitchen to them so that they can have. So this is what we do to helping them to showing Christ's love by demonstrating. So it is sometimes we need to go and tell them the love of Jesus by loving them and caring for them and helping them when they have nothing. So this is a wonderful ministry. We see a lot of people in the villages come and they see what we do, they want to know, and that's the opportunity for, for us to share the gospel with them and, and the love of Christ. So that's a, a, it's an MI project that we do. <clears throat> and also with the food bank, uh, after COVID, it was a really challenges to take uh, some little things that we can to the people interior and uh, give them uh, gospel and also literature for them to read, to understand. You know, they're too far. They can't come to the church as often as that. But we have one right interior at the moment. And uh, Brother Celesi is, you know, is, and his brothers and his family are gathering together in the village, little village. Uh, there, so it is. It is a wonderful blessing to see how we can be effective in going out and reaching out to the people, and try to build something to help them to continue with the gospel and reaching out those in that area that need to know the Savior. So these are some of the things we do. Even we're busy with the school ministries and working with the children every day. That's you know from Sun Monday to Friday, and then. Saturday, we have day off, and Sunday, we're busy in the church, and uh, uh, there's a lot of work, and we have a boarding student who lives there. They are 16 at the moment, and my wife has to cook them three meals a day, so she's busy in cooking, feeding them, looking after them, and helping them to grow uh, and educate them academically and also physically help them to teach them to do some physical activities around the property, gardening and, and other activities that we are doing with them. And also, the main purpose is to know the Lord and uh, to teach them in ev by every means and way we teach them to show that how you can learn to do things if you put God first in your life. If he's not first, then you are missing a lot. So it is a great opportunity. You know, these people come with uh, that idea that they are good. And that they think they are good. They think, oh, everything going to be fine. But it becomes a great challenge for us to tell them, not everything is good here, unless until you know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you think good things are good and better. And it's going to get better. But if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you struggle here with your life and then it will be the worst place that you're going to end up. So it's a challenge. It's really <coughs> a challenge to help them so that they can know Christ as their Lord and Savior. All right. So if you have any question regarding what we do, and uh, you can ask me, or if you want to know really what we do, come and visit us. And, <coughs> and let's go to the field and see what happened and how you can be effective in the work and reaching out to the people. Amen. All right, today I, I'm going to, uh, uh, if you've got a Bible, and we can turn to the book of Deuteronomy, and the word is in the screen as well, and uh, as we 
uh, see what the Word of God says to you and I uh, as we look onto His Word. Uh, uh, this should I put, press there. All right, this is what the Bible says, and shall we all, no, still this <laughs> All right. The book of Deuteronomy, as we see, chapter 6, and then we can read from verse 17 to verse 18, if it works. Show up in the screen soon. Sometimes it does happen. <clears throat> all right, in the Bible, let's all read together verse 17, shall we? To see. And hear what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 17. And the word says, Ye shall diligently keep the commandment of God the Lord your God, and his testimony and his status, which he had commanded thee. And verse 18, he says that, And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well in thee, and thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord shut unto the Father. And in verse 19, it helps us, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord has spoken. And uh, if the thing comes on, uh, if you want to operate from there, okay, skip the reading, please. All right, this is my theme this evening, is Christian enemy. How many of you have enemies? Well, we think of, when I talk about enemies, the thing that comes to our mind, my neighbor, maybe the worst enemy I have, or my workmates, or my schoolmate, or maybe my wife, maybe my husband, you know, maybe my children. So we think about all enemies that we have, but in matter of fact, the worst enemy that you and I have, if it can come on in the screen, and the worst enemy we have, not the people that we interact daily, they are not our worst enemy. They shouldn't be our enemies if you're born again, but the worst enemy that we have in us is selfishness. And many times we don't think about this thing, isn't it? We don't know that we have enemies in us. We think we are all right. We are born again. We go to church every Sunday. We do these things for the Lord. We do that for the Lord. We reach out the world for the, for the sake of the gospel. But the worst thing we have in us is selfishness. We just look into ourselves. And this is a sad thing, you know, as Christians, that we become so selfish that we only think of ourselves, we forget about the things that the Lord wants us to do in us and through us. And this becomes a great hindrance in ourselves. So we need to be careful and be able to know that these enemies doesn't do any good to us. It always, you know, brings such a hindrance for the ministry of God. You know, people are looking at you and I today and what they're thinking about us. Do they see selfishness in us or they can see Christ in us? So most of the time, you know, we are so busy and in all kinds of things and we have this habit in it. And these things, it is not taught to us. We don't learn it uh, from our parent. We don't learn it in our school. We don't learn it anything. We are born with it. 
You know, that's what the Bible says. When we have this, then we are born sinners. How can you be born Christian? I don't know. It doesn't say in the Bible you are born Christian. Because we have the greatest enemy in us. And that's why we have enemies that we make and that is within us. With this enemy, we see others and we think about them the same. Because we are so selfish. And we don't even want to see this thing in us. We think we are all right. We think that, oh, I'm good. I don't need this. He needs it. She needs it. They need it. Everybody needs it. I don't need it. I'm good. You know, and I just, you know, that keeps going and, and keep doing that. So that is our worst enemy today. And then when, it, when we have this kind of enemy in us today, what will happen to you and I, we become a great hindrance in sharing the gospel to others. Because people look at us and they say, ah, I know him. Because we don't project Christ the way we should. So he, this becomes our greatest enemy in ourselves. We need to get rid of us, uh, rid of it as quick as we can if it's in us by showing that love of Christ <clears throat> so that it can help us. And that's what the Bible here helps us to understand that how we can. And John chapter 8 verse 32, and this is what the Bible says. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you up free. God wants to set us free from selfishness. The worst enemy that I have in us. And that's what God wants to set us free from. Can we say with honesty in our heart this evening, say, man, I am free today because I don't have that enemy in us. But unfortunately, we battle with it. We are not honest with ourselves. And that's why we struggle. And God wants to help us so that we can be free indeed. And that's what I said. God is doing a work in us by setting us free from these enemies that we have in us. Don't think about the enemies that we have outside. They're not our enemies. You think they are. Even a person may be a, a worse thing they may have done in your life. And you look at him, he's the worst enemy. No. The worst enemy is me because these symptoms that I have need to be diagnosed. Like any sickness we have, we go to a doctor. Because if we don't, it bothers us, isn't it? We can't sleep. We, we, everything goes, you know, our mood goes bad, and we don't want to talk to, to others. Everything. But when we go to a doctor, we do go through and we diagnose. And they say, oh, this is what you have. Okay. Then you want a cure. But the cure that the Bible gives us is that he wants to set you and me free from this disease. It can be set free because that's what God's word said. If you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are free indeed. But if these things are still in us, we need to restart checking our life this evening saying, am I free from all those things? Is God love really the way God loves me, I demonstrate that love to others. So God wants to help us to set us free from this bondage that we are carrying that is poisoning us every day that we see. Next, please. And as we go through here in Gospel of John, again, 14, verse 6, the Bible says what Jesus said, I am the, the way and the truth. Do you believe that? We do, isn't it? But when we say that we believe that, that is to say to ourselves, the truth makes one's free. And that is God's truth. And his truth will make you and us free today is simply because we know that Jesus is the truth. And I'm glad that I knew that. In 1975, 23rd of August, I knew the truth. Man, I never heard the truth before. But that day when I had the truth, it set me free from my sin. Because I was sin, I didn't know that. We thought we are righteous people in this planet earth. Because I got so many gods. I can go before any god. 
But that was not the answer. Only Christ said, he is the truth, and he set us free. And the truth makes everybody free who calls upon him. <sighs> Something wrong with me. <laughs> All right. Any attempts at freedom other than from the Lord Jesus Christ brings what? Bondage and slavery. And then it is an enemy. You see that many times we live in bondage. All kind of things that, you know, creeps into our mind, and we are slave to it, and we don't say. We don't want to be free from the slavery of sin or the burden, the worry or selfishness that causing us all kind of things in our life. And that's become a great problem in ourselves as we look. But here, if you want to get free from anything, you won't be getting free because the only way is Jesus. There is no other way. There is no name that is given under the heaven that one can find salvation. It is only through the Lord Jesus Christ. The name is above all names. The second poison we have in us is failure. How many times, you know, we ignore this fact? It is a great enemy that, you know, that bothers us and, and a lot of people, you know, they become depressed on it. You know, they worry and there is a fear. They, they go through all these things because they think they have failed. And devil is very smart, isn't he? He's a great enemy. He just put a little, little, little thought in our brain. Yeah, you are a failure. Yes, I'm a big failure. And we start, we start to ponder upon it rather than rebuking it and saying that I'm a conqueror in Christ Jesus. He has victoriously conquered that and conquered all these symptoms that he has. You see, Simon Peter, you know, he was very emotional. All the time you read, he, he was unstable and he was very quick and fit to give what? Temper. You know, even he took his shot and what he did? Slice the ears of the servant of the priest. That's Peter was. He took a lot of challenge. But here we can see also, you know, doubt sees the obstacles. You know, oh, you doubt about it. Oh, I, I'm a failure. And what you say? Because of that doubt. And it always drives you in all kinds of obstacles. Doubt are failure to our Christian life. You doubt God. You think in your mind, Oh, I've been going to church. I don't see anything. All kind of thoughts come. You know, and then that's become a great failure. Today, a lot of Christians who say they are Christian, they no longer walk with God because they have failed to recognize the true Savior. They didn't even mean genuinely to be born again. See, a born-again Christian will say to himself, I'm not a failure. My God has victoriously conquered failure for me. He no longer there to make me fail. Others may see that, but God doesn't see you and I as a failure. You know, if I go and reach to somebody out there and told him the gospel and he had it, that doesn't mean you failed it. He didn't get saved. He will get saved. In God's time. And that's what it happened. You know, many times uh, uh, you go and you pour your heart to people. And they, they say, oh, yes. I want to receive Christ as the Lord and Savior. They will say, to be, they will be polite. And for most of the people, especially Hindus, they say, yes, I want to. That doesn't mean they are saved. They're simply saying to themselves, I can add another God to my collection. I got so many, so let me add another one. Next time you go there, they will point it. I got Jesus sitting in my collection. So they are not mean business with God. So you don't get discouraged or disappointed because I failed. And that's what we think most of the time. But we are not the failures, amen? 
we are conquerors in Christ. We can overcome all the techniques of the devil. All the thinking that we think need to be risen with the word to set our mind free from this bondage of failure. And then <clears throat> the third thing we see, this is the worst enemy. I'm telling you, this is the worst enemy. I'm not talking about people who are outside Christian circle. I'm talking about Christian today. And they say they are Christian, but this is the problem we face in our lives today. And we're not going to admit it. We keep it ourselves. Because this is the deadly poison and brings such a chaos in our personal life and even in the life of others. We are so jealousy, you know, jealous about everything. And that's why we don't really get all that we want to do or things that we want to do. You see, people are jealous of things of, things of others. They are. And today we're going to show you that uh, the three important things that we are jealous of. First, we see the people or sometimes us are jealous because of our position, what we have, what we have collected. Or oh, he got more than me. Mm. Mm. Oh, he, he's driving, you know, BMW while I got this Toyota Camry. Right? Oh, he got mansion and I got little tiny one there. What I can possess. And secondly, position. They are fighting for position. That happened outside our Christian faith, isn't it? There's too much happening. Because I used to work in a secular world. <clears throat> and there was too much fighting about position. Even they don't know the job, they want to go up ahead of you. And that's why I resigned and I said, I'm not going to work for this. Position. People are jealous about position. And we sometimes are too jealous of somebody's position who are just a junior. All of a sudden, he went ahead of us. And we become so jealous about it. And the third thing is about personality. About somebody's personality. Well, there are a lot of things we can talk about this evening. But these all things only hurts us. It doesn't hurt anybody else. Gives you and me a great burden within ourselves. And our lives is just, you know, uh, scattered here, there, everywhere. It's because of this poison that we harbor within ourselves. We forget about the Savior who set us free. We forget about what was accomplished at the cross of Calvary for me. I'm glad that he died for me personally. You know, I didn't deserve it. There was nothing good in me that he can say to me, you are a good person that I died for you. He died for me while I was a sinner. He paid my price for sin on the cross of Calvary. He took it upon himself and said, I paid it for you. So these things have no room in my heart. And it's not easy to get rid of these things if you truly have not given your life to Jesus. If you truly are not committed to serve him. Otherwise, these poisons will going to take you far away. Slowly by slowly, we'll be walking away from Christ. So, Christian, we need to be careful that whoever or whatever they are, that we are not jealous of them. Or whatever things they have, we are not jealous with it. We are excited. You know, that's good about that. You know, your brother is progressing. Praise the Lord. We're going to keep praying for him. Amen, brother. Rather than getting jealous. Hmm, where is he getting from? I wonder he's doing the right thing. Huh? In Fiji, you know, they are doing a lot of drugs now. Everywhere. Everybody talks about, oh, he's, he's getting up because he, he's selling marijuana. How do you know? Before we say anything, we need to be careful. Yeah. Otherwise, we are jealous. And that is what many of us do. In Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6, here the Bible says, Now, set me as a seal upon thine heart, and a seal upon thine arm. 
for love is stronger than as death. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. I like that. If that thing come place in art, it will be a cruel than grave. And the Bible says the coals of therefore are coals of fire, which had a most vehement flame. It's a powerful word. God's word is very powerful. You know, it helps us. It gives us a great motivation within us. Help us to stand sharp in anywhere we go. With whoever we may be, you know, if we are away, we can stand and tell that, you know, because of his word that is in me, is able to make me stand for my king. Because he is so powerful. Be excited. Don't get, you know, this heart of you know, discouragement. You say, oh, that's hard. I can't able to do. I got this. If you have this symptom in you, it's better we bring it before the throne of grace. You tell God. Don't tell anybody. Tell God. God, I have this problem. I didn't know that I have it, but I know I have it, but I want to lay it before the throne of grace. Lord, do something about it. He will. If you tell him, he will help you. In Proverbs 23, 7, the Bible says, As a man thinking, so is he. You know? And that's why the Bible says, Out of heart comes all the issues of life, isn't it? So what are we thinking when we see things? We need to think that God has set me free from my bondage, and now I got responsibility that I didn't have before, but now when I'm born again, when I know Jesus is my Lord and Savior, I have a greater responsibility. It doesn't end. Keep working, keep praying, keep trusting, knowing that God is still working in each and every one of us. He's not finished yet. He's doing great work in us. But we need to allow him to work in our life. You know, jealousy is sin, is a deadly sin. Deal with it before it destroys you. You're not going to destroy somebody else because you're jealous and you have this symptom in you, but it will destroy you emotionally, spiritually, and physically. This is what it does. You know, you aren't going to think right because it's a sin. A lot of people talk about sin, but this sin which is in us, you know it, I know it, but we don't want to deal with it. And God wants us to, because he gives us opportunity, you know, and saying to us, bring it before me. I will take it. He won't go and forcefully saying that, oh, I'll take it out. You got this problem. But he wants us to bring it before his throne. We need to pray and ask God to help me if this symptom that I have in my body, which is jealousy. Lord, I see every moment I look at something. If I see someone or if I look at my husband, my heart is jealous. Or I live for look at my wife or my children or my neighbors, my friends. Hey, we need to get it before the throne of grace, before it destroys you Physically, spiritually, emotionally, it will destroy each and every one of us. If you're not careful, we need to bring it before God so that he can help us. The fourth thing is laziness. There are a lot of lazy people out there. In Fiji, there are heaps of it. They don't want to work. There are a lot of people just want to just, just hand out. So, are we lazy? Is this... Something that is in us. Something that we need to see carefully. See, laziness brings barriers to blessings. When we have this symptom in us, it stops the blessing of the Lord. So ask yourself this question this evening. Am I blessed? If we have this spirit of laziness, then it is a barrier to the blessing. It will not make you strong. You'll find it yourself. You can experience that in us. When you have the symptom in you, you know that. <clears throat> it won't help you in any state of your life or your progress that you want to make in your physical life. 
it will hunt you down. So we need to know that to help it to call upon God. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, that's what the Bible says. And that ye steady to be quiet and do, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hand, and as we commanded you. You know, we have to. Even though, you know, many times, you know, in school we are in suits, and, and sometimes I have to wear my overall to go out there. Even I can't do much, but I'll be showing the people how to do it. Now, we have great privilege to help our brother who came to know the Lord put a floor, a concrete floor, as you've seen in the slide. He was sleeping with his seven children, a baby, in a dead floor with a mat and the rats about this size running. And I, when I sit there and then I look at that, I say, you know, my heart just, you know, I feel very sad about that baby because... She will get sick if that bread going to bite her or can kill her. So the Lord laid burden in our heart. He said, oh, guys, we don't need to be. We need to go and do something. So it's very far away from us. It takes two hours drive to go to his place right in the rugged mountain. And we used to go down bad roads. We put all things, concrete mixer we have, cement, and everything that need to fill that floor. We went right inside the village, and we poured that concrete floor. And the villagers, they all came, and they just start to clap of what the Indians are showing the Fijian. I told them, we are not Indians. We are a child of God, the Most High God. Because we have loved our Lord so much that we want to show his love to my brother who is struggling here, who came to know the Lord. So we don't need to be lazy. We need to, you know, put our hand to work. We need to go there. We need to show them the love of God by helping them so that they can understand and know Christ as the Lord and Savior. That they may walk honestly towards them that are without and that they may have lack of nothing. So when we help somebody, what a joy. It's not because we want a name there. We help because we love God. We show that love. We demonstrate that love. We sit with them and we minister to them so that they can see what God is doing, not what we are doing. It is through his love that we interact with one another. And that's what God wants to do. The fifth one is pride. Oh, this one, I, I tell you, we all have it, isn't it? In some state, or oh, well, we, we don't want to show it sometimes, but sometimes it comes up. Pride. You know, he said, a high look and a proud out and a plowing of the wicked is sin. It's just a sin. And we are so pride. You know, one day, a little girl after chapel came to me and he said, uh, Pastor, you didn't pray. He said, you didn't pray. You know, I got angry. My pride. Just look at that girl. I said, go sit down. Go into your classroom. She quietly said with her head and she went. But that day, in the afternoon, when I sat down, something started bothering me. It was my pride that I, rather than saying to her, oh, I'm sorry, let's pray. Rather doing that, I rebuked her. And that night I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. I was tossing because that was killing me inside. And my wife said, what happened? I said, this is what happened. I said, she said, Michael. When she's Michael, I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> so next morning when she came, I went to her. And I apologized. And you can see the smile in her face. Sometimes it's good to learn from children. They've got a lot of things to teach us. We think we are, oh, I'm pastor. You know, I know what I'm doing. But no. Lesson learned. So my pride came in. So that will continue to plow in our lives and continue to grow if you don't do anything about it. You know, I is the subject of pride. I did it. 
oh, it's mine. You know, we can boast about what I did, but we shouldn't be. It should be what God did in me and through me. And that's what pride did. Forms of pride. What are some of the forms we can see of pride? Pride takes in many forms, many ways. And sometimes we are not aware of these forms that comes in our life. You know, the first thing we see here result from an overly and inflected egos that we have. We are so ego in our pride that we forget who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. We forget. They think, I know Christ. A lot of people say, oh, I know Christ. But it is a pride they're speaking. We need to humbly understand and not to be overly eager to say that what you are and what you can do. And result from the low self-esteem, the form of low self-esteem. And also, angry is often a manifestation of pride. How quick we get angry if somebody says something when you don't like it? Boy, I tell you, it just seems like now it's a boiling water that's bubbling out. And that's what happening to us because we deal with people every day. We Christian, I'm not talking about those who are pastors or, or they don't have to uh, get angry. No, every one of us are child of God, isn't it? We all are child of God. How do we know that we are child of God? Gospel of John, chapter 1 and verse 12, what he says, but many has received them, them he gave power to become what? The sons of God. We are his child. Everybody, some, many times we just put the weight on the pastor. No, pastor, you know, I tell people, you don't, you know, say pastor will do everything. Like one lady came to me and said, pastor, can you pray? I said, what's wrong with your prayer? Why you want to depend on pastors? If tomorrow pastors is gone, then who's going to pray? You're going to keep running to people? No. You can pray. We all can pray. We all have responsibilities. So, Pride sometimes, you know, comes very quickly in us and destroys one another. The many people are destroyed because of their pride, and they don't know it. They think they are Christian, whether it's me, whether it's pastor, or anybody. Sometimes our pride destroys our lives and our ministries and everything. And that's why Jesus teaches his disciples in a humble way. Because what he had... He had a compassionate heart, a heart that was compassionate. And he went and taught them. And that is what he See, I don't deserve this or that. That's what my pride says. I don't deserve it. Oh, I need it right now. Give it or else. So we as Christians need to know that in matter of fact, we don't deserve salvation. Why would God die for me? What we have done, any good? We have done nothing good. Well, all we did is just to mingle ourselves in sin, continue in living it until the conviction comes into our heart. And when it does happen, then we know that because of his grace, we are saved. We are privileged. I'm telling you, we are privileged today to know him as Lord and Savior. They're out there, they are not. If they don't make it quickly, they will be sorry. I tell people here, I tell ch ch church that if you don't go and tell them, you will be sorry too because you had opportunity to go tell them before it's too late. We need to go. We need to tell. And don't let our pride bring a hindrance in our life not to do what God wants us to do. All right, in closing, this is the best part of the sermon. I know everybody likes it. Okay. So here we can see, as we go through in life, there is certain things we need to really ask God to minister to our hearts. Is these symptoms growing in us? Lord, have I surrendered all this to you? And saying, Lord, I have a problem with selfishness. And Lord, I want to hand it to you. Please help me. You know? And when we 
go before the throne and, and bring all these symptoms. And we can just have many lists of things that we still we hold to it. But we need to lay it before the throne of grace. And God is willing to help you, help us get over it. And make us a loving person that we never thought we would be. But God does that. And he gives us the strength to overcome these symptoms that we have that harbor, you know. As I said, they know if we are sick, we quickly go to the doctor. You know, we want to get, you know, get well. We want to see what we what can do. But when we get sick of this kind of thing, we don't go to our doctor, the Lord Jesus. We let it grow. But my prayer this evening is, don't get you know, busy on doing all things, forgetting that what you have in you that cause you to be a stumbling block for yourself, for your own personal growth and maturity in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is how the word busy helps us to show being busy, that is being under Satan's yoke. And many times we don't realize that. But that is what we are. We get so busy, we don't bring this thing before the throne of grace and, and plead for his blood over it and ask God to help us. And I pray the Lord will give us wisdom and encouragement that if these are uh, the things that I have in me today, I will lay it before the throne of grace and say, God, help me to be a better person, not to carry on all these things in my life so that it will destroy me. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for uh, this evening, Lord. You know each heart. You know what's going on in each heart, Lord. And my prayer is, Lord, that you will help us, strengthen us, that we can overcome this. And, Lord, to reach out to the world for the sake of the gospel. There are many out there, Lord, who are crying out, who need help. There are so many, Lord, today that are living in a broken heart. And I pray, God, we have the message that Jesus saved. Help us, Lord, that we can get rid of all the symptom that is in us, Lord, that causes a stumbling block. Help us to be a stepping stone, Lord. We pray as we surrender in Jesus' name. Amen.